Good evening. Once again, I'm Stephanie Rule, live from Los Angeles. And I start with one question. Are you buckled up? You better be, because Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen just warned of a new and earlier drop-dead date for the debt ceiling. Yellen now says the country could run out of cash to pay its bills on June 1st. That is one month from tonight, if Congress doesn't raise the debt limit. Default would mean disaster for our, our economy. Everyone would feel the effects. Secretary Yellen's warning came late today in a letter to top lawmakers saying this, quote, it is imperative that Congress act as soon as possible. Tonight, President Biden invited the top four congressional leaders to the White House May 9th to find some way to avoid default. Last week, of course, the GOP-led House passed a bill that raised the debt limit, but it included steep spending cuts. Biden said absolutely no to that. And tonight, he and McCarthy are still in a standoff. We will not pass the debt ceiling that just raises it without doing something about our debt. We pay our bills, and we should do so without reckless hostage-taking from some of the mega-Republicans in Congress. Meanwhile, the administration is also dealing with the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. Regulators seized First Republic Bank, then they sold it to stronger hands, J.P. Morgan Chase, whose CEO now says this banking crisis is over, but a lot of people are wondering, could other banks fall next? We're also following the latest in a civil rape trial against former President Donald J. Trump. His accuser, E. Jean Carroll, was back on the stand for a second day of intense cross-examination. NBC's Laura Jarrett has that story. Joe Tacopina, an attorney for the former president, doubling down on the defense theory that Carol made up her sexual assault accusation against Mr. Trump to gain notoriety. President Playing this old interview on CNN for the jury, where she describes bumping into Mr. Trump at Bergdorf Goodman and helping him pick out a gift. He was going to get some lingerie. And I am just like, oh, well, I can dine out forever on this story. Today, Carol told the jury it was such a New York story and such a happy story. And then, of course, it turned tragic. She says the former president raped her in the dressing room, an allegation the defense again tried to undermine Monday by saying she never called the police, despite having told others in her advice column to do so. Carol explaining in court, I'm a member of the silent generation. Women like me were taught and trained to keep our chins up and to not complain. Takapina also confronting Carol with old posts on Facebook years after she says she was assaulted, where she calls herself a, quote, massive fan of Mr. Trump's TV show, The Apprentice. But Carol told the jury she also made several jokes about him. Tomorrow, we're going to be keeping a close eye on a key hearing in the Senate Judiciary Committee after a series of alarming reports involving Supreme Court justices conveniently failing to disclose financial conflicts of interest. Lawmakers will hold a hearing on the court's ethics. We're going forward, and I think we're going to produce a bipartisan code of ethics. The highest court in the land should not have the lowest standard of ethics in the federal government. They better take this seriously. The integrity of the court and the reputation of the court is at stake.